the indie horror scene is in a really bizarre place right now. Five Nights at Freddy's is having pretty much its biggest year ever. Some really standout games have released in relatively recent times, such as The Outlast Trials, Amnesia the Bunker, My Friendly Neighborhood, and some really cool games are on the way, such as Shipwrecked 64, Indigo Park, and of course Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. However, Garden of Banban Ban is still thriving, Hello Neighbor has had some big releases this year, Dark Deception is in a ridiculous state, Roblox Horror is growing every day, and Mascot Horror as a concept is pretty much in shambles. So like I said, things are pretty strange at the moment. But despite being so aware of the absurdity of the space, and despite how familiar I am with it, there are still moments that genuinely confuse and surprise me to this day. And today we discuss one of those moments, allow me to introduce you to the upcoming indie horror game, Dash for Your Life. So do you guys know what Geometry Dash is? I'm pretty sure you do. It is a rhythm-based precision platformer where you just need a single button to control your movements. It is simple, but far from easy, and of course, it is very, very popular. But what if this game was spooky? Well, that's where Dash for Your Life comes into play. This is a horror game based on the gameplay and formula of Geometry Dash. This may sound ridiculous, and that is because it is, and it's a very real thing. As far as I can tell from the trailer, what makes this a horror game is that a fellow square will chase you throughout the levels, and this square will make loud stomping noises as it approaches towards you. This square also has a spooky face on it. And I will say, this does remind me of another box-like horror character. The only other element of horror I can decipher from this trailer is that other spooky faces will just appear on the screen, and you need to click them to get rid of them along the way. Either when one is there for too long, or there are too many of them at once, I'm not sure which it is, it will jump scare you. And according to the description, you will get jump scared if you lose as well, which makes sense. So that's pretty much all there is to Dash for your life, as far as I'm aware. It seems to simply be a game like Geometry Dash, but it will also feature spooky faces. But let's talk how I feel about this, and how other people feel about this, and what my concerns are. Let's get this out of the way before I'm called overly negative or something along those lines. I don't have any major problem with this game. I don't see this as a part of the basic mascot horror game made for profit trend. Maybe it is that, I don't know, but it doesn't give me that feeling, and I'm not making that accusation. In fact, I actually think this idea by itself is pretty fascinating. It is such a bizarre format for a horror experience that I never would have come up with, so if someone wants to give it a real go to make something unlike anything we've seen before, that sounds like something I'd be up to check out. What I will say, and this is my main issue with the game that makes me not totally on board with it, is that this is not stylistically or aesthetically separate from Geometry Dash at all. I like the idea of being able to click on things or drag platforms during gameplay. Forgive me if that's something you can do in Geometry Dash, I'm not sure. But the aesthetic of this game is just a more dull Geometry Dash. There's no uniqueness to the blocks or the platforms or the backgrounds. This game is Geometry Dash, but there is a spooky face behind you, and I find that boring. What I would like to see, if this game does in fact come out, is a more creative and gritty aesthetic for the levels. I'm not really convinced you can make this game legitimately scary, but giving the blocks and the backgrounds a darker theme would definitely help. I don't really know what that would consist of, aside from maybe making the level look more decrepit, giving it a darker color scheme. I guess you could throw in some blood splatters, as cliche as that is. Another important thing I'm noticing in the trailer is that the boxy boo here isn't much of an active threat. There are literally points in the trailer where the player is given the opportunity to sit perfectly still with no risk of dying. Why would that be a thing? A selling point of this game on the Steam page is that it builds tension. Apparently your pause button will even be disabled during gameplay. But isn't the risk of dying to the big spooky box the thing that would build the tension? I'm going to assume these levels are early in the game and it will get harder over time and the big box man will become more of a threat over the course of the game. That could be wrong and this could end up being a very boring experience, but that's my assumption as of now. I do want to remain open-minded with this experience because this is seemingly the dev's first game and there isn't that much information on it as of now, and I'm just more interested in seeing how it plays out. Because this dev is being pretty ripped apart for the announcement of this game, and it's been a long time since we've gotten an update on the game, so I'm wondering if it's even going to happen. The general community and anyone that's seen this game is ripping into it pretty egregiously, so I wouldn't blame them if they did in fact cancel it, but I just, I really want to play this game, genuinely. I would absolutely stream it if it were to come out. To give a conclusion here, I am very interested in seeing how this will play out. 
I don't exactly have the highest hopes for this game because it doesn't really look like the most original game possible, and making this genre into horror doesn't really feel possible in my opinion. However, I am staying open-minded until it releases, if it does. Because as I said, I am very open to unique indie horror games right now. I am tired of the mascot horror slop that has been bombarding my existence for the last several months. I've been playing a lot of games that aren't mascot horror as of late, and it's been great. Tune into my streams, we have a lot of fun over there. But, I still like mascot horror as an idea, and I think it has an obscene amount of potential that has not been touched. So, although this game may not be good, it's definitely different, and that's really all I want right now from the genre. That is going to be all from me. I know this was a shorter one, but this was just something I really wanted to talk about. Let me know what you think of this thing that does indeed exist. Please hit like and subscribe, it helps me out more than you realize. Thank you for watching, I'll see you guys next time.